and the beans also. Hi and welcome to my channel Morbid History and a giant hicking thanks for 1k yeah. subscribers! So today I thought I would do like an extra fun little video. So I'm actually going to branch into icebergs and I'm gonna do a weird deaths through history. Iceberg. Yas, yas. We are. Well, hello there. Party people. Indeed, tis I from the future. No, this is me from the next day editing, realizing that some of you might not actually know what an iceberg tier list is. So I'm just gonna read off apps uh, an explanation iceberg is a chart that sorts facts and theories from a piece of media by obscurity usually the most commonly known subjects near the tip of the iceberg and the lesser known subjects being near the abyss yeah so yeah now that we all know what we're getting ourselves into today let's go into tier one and two some entries on this iceberg are very, very old and therefore have very little information to them. So, of course, some entries will have more details and some will have less. And then we start with tier one of the iceberg, the very, very top. We're starting from something from my little home country. Sweden! Yay! And uh, yeah, so the first name we got on our little list on tier 1 is Adolf Fredrik. He was king in Sweden in the 1700s. He had himself a little ball. It was lent, I think it's called in English, fastan. And uh, you were supposed to really have a big old buffet and eat all you wanted so he had lobster he had caviar he had champagne all of that but at the end of the night he was still not super satisfied so he wanted one of those swedish delicacies that we still eat today during spring it's called a semla this is what that looks like but the semla during his day was actually also put into a plate and filled with warm milk around it uh, and uh, just one of those is like um, a heart attack waiting to happen but he ate 14 of them and it dispatched him into eternity number two on our little list is uh, everyone's favorite russian mad monk Grigori Rasputin. He was both loved and hated during his days. He's also well known for being very hard to kill. So the evening of his death went as follows. First he came home to a man named Felix. Uh, I don't really remember but I'll put his face here. Uh, he had invited Rasputin over for some food and drink. Uh, and, and that he got. He got himself some cake, he got himself some tea, some wine. All of them spiked with cyanide. And to everyone's surprise, this didn't touch Rasputin at all. He was just sitting there. Co completely alive, you know. Um, so uh, they did what they had to do. They went and got themselves a gun and shot Rasputin in, in his chest. Then they wandered off for a little bit, uh, but when they returned, Rasputin shot up from his lying position and was very much still alive. And he was mad, as mad as the mad monk could be, and he started chasing Felix and the other poor, pe poor people out into the snow of Russia and there they shot him again. This time might have killed Rasputin. 
finally. But there's some stories going around because then they took took at him up and threw at him into a river. When they took it <laughs> when they took his body up, I don't know, it, it says different things. Some say that he had water in his lungs or that his body had converted in a weird way that would suggest that he had been alive when he was thrown into the lake. Yeah. Uh, either way, our lovely house monk wasn't the easiest of targets. Now moving on. Now we're in Greece and I can't for the life of me pronounce these names, but I'll try my best. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, Achilles. Achilles. It's, it's, it's written like this. Achilles. Yeah, he was a Greek man, um, and he had been told by a prophet that he would die on a certain day. In a very specific way, he would have a house fall upon his head. But Achilles, Achilles, was a smart man. He decided to stay outside the entire day because no house is gonna fall upon his head when he's outside. But you can't run away from fate. What happened was that he, he okay, first of all, he was very bald. This man, this, this Greek man that I can't pronounce, he had a very bald, shiny head. A bird had caught himself a tasty, tasty turtle that he wanted to eat. And when he saw the shiny bald head of Achilles, he mistook it for a hard rock. What the birds would do usually is release the turtle down upon the hard rock so that it would smash and they could eat the yummy turtle inside. But of course this was not a hard rock, this was our Greek man who got the turtle thrown on his head and then and there he was cancelled just like that and the prophecy went true because what are the shells of turtles if not their little homes and then we have number four franz ferdinand a name that i can actually pronounce he was an archduke and his death was actually the starting point of World War One. The weird part of it is that he survived many assassination attempts. Uh, he and his wife Sophie were going on a motorcade with an open car and there were plenty of assassins placed along the way that the car would go. Well, in short, there were seven assassins. Most of them failed, some of them just backed out of it but at some point the car went basically just took a wrong turn and there at the wrong turn was one of the failed assassins sitting at a cafe eating a yummy sandwich when he suddenly saw Franz and the car he jumped up and shot him and actually did the deed that the others had failed to do. But most importantly, what kind of sandwich was it? Did he eat it? Did he take it with him when he ran away? If anyone knows, let me know down below. Now to number five. There we have another Greek man, a philosopher. And again, I will try my hardest, but Pythaga... Pythaga... Pythagoras... Pythagoras was a man that had a weird relationship with beans. That was like if you ate them and you passed gas, you would pass your life force with that gas. And also beans contained little lost souls of poor humans that had died. This bean man had enemies political enemies, you know, old Greek times, everyone had those. And one day he was ambushed and he was chased. He 
almost got away until he reached a field of growing beans. He just couldn't go and walk upon those beans because it went against his beliefs and moral compass, so he just stopped and let himself be cancelled. And the beans all clapped. And now we're truly moving on, because now we have someone from China. Qin Shi Huang was an emperor in China, and he basically died from ingesting large amounts of mercury because he thought that that would give him eternal life. And he is also very well known for his terracotta army. And the last person on tier one is Henry the First, another king who died from eating something. <laughs> this time he ate something that his physician had specifically told him not to eat. It was a fish called lam lampreys, and I have no idea what that is, so I'll google it now. Let's do it. That's one gross fish. I understand why he died. It's not a very pretty fish. It's long and it's... Yeah. Yay. Well, he fell ill and got convulsions and fever and he was dispatched into another place. Yeah. So that's the end of the first tier of this iceberg. Now moving on to tier 2. The first name on tier 2 is Alan Pinkerton. Alan Pinkerton was a man's man. He was uh, living a dangerous life. He was a spy, he was a detective, and yeah, you know. The main gist of it is that he had a, a, a cool and tough life. And he ended his days by basically being murdered by his wife's poodle. He was out walking his wife's poodle one morning when the poodle um, started walking around him, um, twisting his legs, and he fell over, bit his tongue, got sepsis, and took it to the road to more blissful places, containing less of his wife's poodle. Then we have number two, and that's Edmund Ironside. He died by being stabbed in the butt while sitting on his toilet. His enemy had been sitting down there in the latrine waiting for him, and when opportunity struck, he just went for it and uh, did a good job, I'm guessing. Now to 445 B BC, and another Greek. Heracli Heraclitus. Heraclitus. He had droopsy, and he did not want to have that. So, for some reason, he went ahead and smeared himself in cow manure, where he promptly got stuck. And this was a party for the dogs around. They went ahead and attacked him while he was stuck there and ate him. Oh fuck, my foot is dead. I've been sitting on it. Oh, the other one. In 1410, Martin of Aragon, another king that had way too much to eat, he had eaten an entire goose and was lying in his bed with constipation. Uh, his favorite jester walked in trying to cheer him up and told him a joke. And uh, the joke was apparently way too much fun because uh, Martin died of laughter. <laughs> and we think the constipation, eating of the entire goose, and the joke was just way too much for his body to bear. Number five, and again we go back to the Greeks. So yeah, his name was... Seuxis. 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 Okay. He was a Greek painter and artist. And he also died of laughter. 
he laughed himself to death over his own painting of the goddess Aphrodite. The woman who had commissioned the painting was an elderly woman and the woman had insisted on being the model of said painting. So I feel like dying of laughter and dying of eating too much is way more common than I thought. Number six, we have Safi of Persia. In 1642, he and his rival had a drinking competition and he just basically drank himself to death. Alcohol poisoning. And now for the last one today, number seven, Saint Lawrence. He was a martyr. He was sentenced to death by being roasted on a grill. While he was being roasted, he told his captors that he was done on this side and they could turn him over. Kinda badass, actually. <laughs> so, that was tier 1 and 2 of the Weird Death's Iceberg historic version. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it and that you'll stick around, maybe subscribe, so you can be here for the next installment. Hit the bell so you don't miss it. Bye bye! Giant thanks to all my lovely patrons and check down below for ways to support my channel. Thanks!